Good evening, everybody. It's good to be back with you this evening here on Wednesday night. I'm thrilled to be able to bring you a midweek message to be able to bring some encouragement. I hope that uh, by the end of the time that we're together this evening that you'll be strengthened and that the Spirit of God will have built you up to be able to sustain you throughout the rest of your week. And, you know, it's, if, we, if we think about ourselves in, in the, as a natural man, we need sustenance, right? We need to eat. We need uh, some of you <laughs> like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Others, maybe, you know, a certain variety of that or a different way that you might do it. But you need sustenance throughout your day. And uh, the same way, it's the same way in our spiritual lives. We need sustenance throughout the week as well to be able to keep us moving and motivated. I think sometimes people think that if we just show up on Sunday uh, mornings that somehow or another that's going to be okay and, and, uh, and that's all we need. Well, we really need to feed on the Word of God daily, but uh, also uh, to be able to be ministered a message uh, from uh, time to time and throughout the week, it's always an honor to be able to get to do that. So let's get started here. Um, this evening, and let me just share some nuggets of truth with you. Uh, have you ever asked yourself this? I'll start this evening asking you this. Have you ever thought of yourself in terms of why am I here? Why? What's my existence? What's the purpose in me being here? Because sometimes life can be very cruel. It can be harsh, and it can feel like that we're just kind of going through the motions, that we're just existing. And uh, we live to work another day so that we can make enough money, so that we can eat, so that we can, you know, pay our bills, uh, pay for our homes, our cars, uh, electric bills, and so on. And, and I just submit to you that there's a greater purpose than just existence for people to uh, be on the planet. You know, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, God said, let us. Make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So the Lord said here that I want to create someone. I want to create humanity, what we know ourselves to be as humanity, to be able to be in my image after my likeness, the Lord is saying. And he's saying, let them, let my creation of humanity have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. That tells me that God wanted us to have dominion over the earth and over the animals that are on the earth. And there's things that he wants to happen inside of our existence, inside of our lives. So we, each and every one of us, have been created for a purpose. And I've used the example before. Um, sometimes we do our kids an injustice by trying to encourage them. It's, it's all well-meaning but I believe wrong thinking when we say things like, you can be anything that you want to be. And folks, we all know that's not true. I really wanted to uh, play for the Dallas Cowboys when I was younger. I thought that, you know, I loved the, the NFL and loved football and those kind of things. I, I wanted to be a, uh, you know, an NFL quarterback, right? How many kids don't want to do that? Or play for the Cincinnati Reds, things like that. But folks, the reality was is I just wasn't gifted enough to be able to do those kind of things. I wasn't gifted enough uh, to play basketball for the UK Wildcats as much as I would have wanted to. So I couldn't be that, even though that was what my desire was. But rather than tell our kids that uh, you can be anything that you want to be, the proper thing for us to tell our kids is that let, let's discover what it is that God wants you to be. Let's discover the purpose that God has for our lives because every single person that has been created, every person that is alive on the planet today, there's a purpose in their life. Now, we go through different periods in our lives, right? You know, from the time that we're children to, you know, getting to be a young adult to a middle-aged adult to an elderly person, there's purposes. And those sometimes throughout those years have a tendency to change because we get in seasons in our lives. There are seasons where that are certain things that we're supposed to do that are, that's our purpose. And then there's other times that as, as we change in the seasons of our lives, the purpose begins to change. But one thing always remains. I believe this with all my heart that every person has been created on the planet to make a difference for the kingdom of God in some capacity. Now, there's not one that's great and important and yours is unimportant. They're all important pieces, just different graces and different anointings. 
There's different things that each and every one of us are able to do and each and every one of them are important because God made you the way that he did with a specific purpose in mind and different times throughout your life to be able to be used in the kingdom of God to help the kingdom of God advance. Some are just a little bit more predominant than others that we can see, but all of them very important because how many of you know we need people behind the scenes, we need people in front of the scenes, we need every person collectively doing their job and so God's created us and we tend to think sometimes that our jobs are our purposes like that somehow or another this is what I'm supposed to do and that could be the case because your job could be related to kingdom business. But many times jobs are just a, a, a thing to be able to sustain us naturally speaking, but there's things beyond that that, uh, that God has called us to and so we have to make sure and discover what it is that God wants. You know, everybody has a background of how you were raised. I'm, I'm no different. You know, I was raised in a little small town called Sandy Hook, Kentucky. And uh, I grew up, you know, in just a, what you would, I'm sure most people would think, an average type family. I grew up going to church. I grew up, you know, uh, uh, on a little farm doing, you know, those kind of things. That was the kind of life uh, that, that I knew. And then as I grew up, I thought, uh, I'm going to stay in this little small town. I got into the insurance business, was an insurance door-to-door, if you can imagine that, a door-to-door insurance salesman. I was the guy knocking on your door. You had no idea who he was. And then I'm trying to convince you that you need something that maybe you might or might not need. That was just where it was at that time. But um, that was not my purpose. That was just a phase and a time in my life to get me, you know, in some places, in some ways, prepared for what it was that God really had for me as a purpose. I, I remember uh, Kenneth Hagin years ago listening to Kenneth Hagin talk. He pastored a church for, I believe it was 12 years. And uh, when the Lord called him out of, the, out of pastoring to be able to go into the itinerant ministry, God spoke to him and said, now I'm ready to thrust you into your ministry. And he said, and I thought when I heard that, he said, I thought, Lord, uh, where you been the last 12 years? Don't you know I've been in the ministry for the 12, last 12 years? And he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, all of that was just preparation for what it was that I ultimately have to, to, for your calling, for your grace, for your anointing. He said, all that was preparation for your real purpose in the, in the uh, you know, in being in the ministry. And so um, we just have to realize that. And so I'm in this small town and I'm thinking, this is where I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to live a very quiet, uh, as Kenny Large would put it, a, a simple man's life. That was, that was my thought process. I'm just going to be a simple man. I'm going to live in my small town. And I'm going to just, and there's not anything wrong with small towns, right? Because people need to be in small towns. To, uh, to have ministry and, and kingdom business inside there as well. But that was just my thought process. But God had something different in mind. I had no idea at the time that somehow or another I would move to this area and ultimately that we would start a church and that we'd be involved in this for uh, going on almost 17 years. I had no idea that the Lord would call me into prison ministry, that I had 12 years invested into prison ministry. I had no idea about these. I had no idea that the Lord was going to ask me uh, to go to Bible school and take a, a correspondence Bible school and then continue my, my theological education in varieties of different ways that me and my wife have done. I had no idea about that. At the time, it was so far beyond me to be able to see that. I just couldn't see that far. The only thing I could see was what was happening in the right here and now. But see, folks, many times God is positioning us. He's positioning you to get you ready for a moment to where he will use you in the ultimate purpose that he has. The thing for you and me to remember is this. We have to always be looking for what that purpose is. We have to be open to what that purpose is. If we're closed-minded and we think that this is as good as it gets, this is all we're going to do, then folks, we've closed ourselves down to the move of God. But if we're always open to hearing what God would say to us, doesn't matter what age that you are. doesn't matter if you're young, if you're middle-aged, or if you're an older person. It doesn't matter because, uh, remember, purposes change. There's a time and a place for everything. And I want to talk just a little bit about this. So, I, you know, I wanted to just share just a little bit about my life because that 
that's where I was and this is where I am now. It, it, between now and the time that I leave the planet and go to be with the Lord, who knows what God could change even then. My purpose could change. Right now, my purpose is a, a number of things, but one of those things is to uh, pastor this church and to build the kingdom of God up in this community, in the tri-state area, and to be a blessing to the people and introduce them to the word of faith, to the message of faith, and, and ultimately to a relationship with the Lord Jesus. This is what God has called me to. So when I ask myself, why do I exist? It is to make a difference in the kingdom of God in some capacity. And folks, the same thing is your uh, purpose. Just I don't know the specifics of what that looks like. And maybe you don't either. Maybe you're asking yourself, how do I make a difference? That's why you have to be open to hearing what the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And then when the Holy Spirit speaks, you need to respond. When the Lord spoke to me and told me he wanted me to start a church in Ashland, Kentucky, I was kind of, you know, uh, dumbfounded. I really just, I, I had no idea. What, how do you do that? I don't even know. I've been to church largely my whole life. But I have no idea the specifics or how things work and everything from A, having a building to having equipment to having chairs and, and uh, you know, property to be able to, I, it, was, it was overwhelming. I had no idea how to do it, but I just said the first thing I had to do was say, yes, Lord. And when I finally, it took me a little while to get there, to be perfectly honest, but when I finally got there, I just said, yes, Lord, okay, show me how to do it. And it was one thing after another. If I had saw the enormity of it from the, from the, the moment that he'd asked me, I might not have said no, or I might not have said yes. I might have said no. But folks, wh what I did was I said yes, and I just took it a day at a time because God does not give you a purpose and a calling without giving a plan. And I just followed out the plan of God as best I could at the time. And, and I'm continuing to try to do that. And you should do that as well. And so when you ask yourself, why am I here? Just remember that the Lord wants to do something special in your life. And when I say special, it doesn't necessarily mean somebody else will think it is special. In fact, they might not. It doesn't matter if God speaks to you and you respond, then that's a special thing because it is between you and and him. Now watch this. Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verse 18. I need to get a few scriptures in here. Uh, <coughs> he says, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers. Simon uh, called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you <coughs> fishers of men. In other words, the Lord was saying, Yes, there's nothing wrong with you being a fisherman. People need to eat. They need to, they need to have fish, right? They need to have sustenance, just like we talked about earlier. But he said, but I have a call for you that I'll make you a fisher of men. And folks, the Bible tells us that we're all called to the ministry of reconciliation. Each and every one of us have been called to make a difference to help reconcile people back to God. It looks different in every person's life. It doesn't mean you become a five-fold minister. It doesn't even mean that you, you know, start your own radio program, your, your own Facebook program, or whatever it is. That doesn't, that's not necessarily what it means. Some of you just don't have the personality to be able to do those kind of things. But that's okay because God created you the way he created you. But what he does want you to do is just find your grace, your call, your anointing, your place, your purpose, so that you can fulfill that, walk that out, and that way he can use you in the way that he's created you. And so in John chapter uh, 21, <clears throat> kind of the same instance here, Jesus at this point has been uh, uh, crucified, resurrected from the dead, and, and, the, and the disciples are out at, in, into the sea and they're out fishing. And then they see Jesus on the shoreline and Peter recognizes him and jumps in, swims to the shore. And, and this is the event that's taking place there. And so he asks Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? And now Peter, of course, responds. And he says, yes, Lord, I love you. He says, feed my lambs. And he asks him a second time. He says, Peter, do you love me? For a second time, he says, yes, Lord, you, you know I love you. He says, then feed my sheep. <clears throat> and then a third time, Jesus asks him again. He says, Peter, do you love me? Now, Peter, if somebody asks you three times, it means that, at least in your mind, it means that maybe you doubt that. So Peter's frustrated and he says, yes, Lord, you know all things. You, you know my heart. You know I love you. He says, then feed my lambs. <clears throat> 
do what I have called you to do. He said, in other words, I have called you to a specific thing and at this moment you're not fulfilling it and I want you to know that that call is on your life for a reason and a purpose and we know that Peter largely walked in that call and fulfilled what it was that God had called him to. And then I was thinking about the apostle uh, Paul. Well, before he was Paul, did, did he have, I mean, he was Saul, obviously. <clears throat> but before that, let's think about this in Saul's life. What, what was Saul doing? What did he think was his call and his purpose at the time? The Bible says that he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I mean, this guy has studied the law. He, he's, he's very familiar with the Old Testament. <clears throat> he's trying to, to be the best Pharisee that he could be. But God had something different for him. And that's when Jesus appears to him and tells him, he says, Saul, Saul, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And he says, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am the Lord Jesus. And Saul's life is changed dramatically at that moment that he changes not only his name, his identity. <clears throat> it's not just a changing from Saul to Paul. He is now a different person. And he finds out that his true purpose at this moment is to represent Jesus until the day that he dies and to have a calling on his life to be able to lead people to Jesus. See, this is things that we have to recognize and look for. The difference in mine and your lives compared to Paul, Paul was called in a specific thing to do uh, some, some major things. Okay, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament and, uh, and has dramatic influence upon every Christian believer's life today. Our call may not be quite that dramatic, but folks, it is still with the intent of God fulfilling a purpose in our life. And that's the thing that we have to always remember that, that we should be looking for to be able to choose. I think back in the Old Testament, I thought about Nehemiah. Nehemiah goes before the king and asks him, he says, I have something on my heart and I need to do. Now up to this point, th this is not the call or the purpose on, of Nehemiah's life. But he comes before the king and he says, I have, a, I have something burning on the inside of me that I need to get done that I believe God is instructing me to do, and that's to build back the wall. And so you, 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 you know that story. Uh, the king gives him leave to do it. After he gives him the specifics of what it was that he was going to do, and he wants to know about how long it's going to take. He wanted to know the specifics. So Nehemiah had to dig just a little deeper to be able to find what, the, what those um, what the specifics were, right? And when he got the specifics from God, then the king saw the plan and loosed him to be able to do it. I also think about Esther in the Old Testament. Did Esther have a call on her life? Did she have a purpose? I mean, Mordecai ended up telling Esther, he said, for all you know, you've been born for such a time as this. For all you know, your whole life was to a moment to where this moment in your life was what your real purpose was. All the other stuff was fine and good. It was maybe preparation. Maybe it was enjoyment. Nothing wrong with any of that. <clears throat> but there does come defining moments in people's lives. Have we hit the goal? Have we hit the mark? And folks, every single one of you have a purpose. I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're, if you're 14 years old and you were watching this, this broadcast. There's a purpose in your life. If you're 28 and you say, well, I've got kids and I'm busy and I've got a bunch of things going on in my life, there's a purpose in your life. If you're 35 and you've got, you know, things beginning to happen, you know, there's a purpose in your life. If you turn 45, there's a purpose in your life. You turn 58, there's a purpose in your life. You get 65, there's a purpose in your life. Well, I'm 85, there's a purpose in your life. Every single person has something that the Lord wants to use them in because there's different times and different places and different seasons in our lives to be used. And don't ever think that somehow or another you're not valuable in the kingdom of God. Folks, it doesn't matter where you're at, what age you're at, what stage of life you're at. Some may be more distinct, some may be more dramatic, but there's a purpose in your life and it's a matter of you discovering what it is that God wants you to do. And when you do, he will use you in such a way that is very uh, profound. Now I want to read you something. I was, it's been a few years ago. <clears throat> President Trump at the time uh, was giving an address to uh, the, the body of uh, Liberty University on their, uh, their uh, when the, the, the ones that were graduating there. And, 
And this is some of the things that he said that I thought was just so, it was just, it just really moved me when I heard this and I just want to read it to you. It says, uh, what imprint will you leave in the sands of history? What will future Americans say we did in our brief time right here on earth? Did we take risks? Did we dare to defy expectations? Did we challenge accepted wisdom and take on established systems? Or did we go along with convention, swim downstream so easily with the current, or just give in because it was the easy way? It was the traditional way, or it was the accepted way. Remember this, nothing worth doing ever, ever, ever came easy. Following your convictions mean you must, means you must be willing to face criticism for those who lack the same courage to do what is right. And they know what is right, but they don't have the courage or the guts or the stamina to take it and to do it. It's called the road less traveled. And folks, sometimes the call of God, the purpose that God has on your life will be difficult. It's never easy. It's not just an easy path. When the Lord spoke to me and, and Debbie about starting a church, I'll just be honest with you, it was, it was overwhelming. I didn't know how difficult it would be. I knew it would be difficult, but truly I didn't realize how difficult it would be. And through the years it has been difficult, but that doesn't mean that it's not worthy or worth doing. And whatever it is, even if it seems difficult in your life, when you know that the Lord is the one that is behind it, He doesn't ask us to do something that he's not in it and doesn't grace us and anoint us to not be able to fulfill what he's called us to do. He will always be behind what his plan is. When he tells us to do it, even though it may be difficult, he will help us to sustain us through it so that we can achieve it and be able to fulfill what he's called us to do and bring the end result to pass. Amen? <clears throat> so we have to realize that folks, success in our lives don't just happen automatically. If you find anybody that's been successful in life, you'll have to realize that they have worked hard in order to achieve that success. Success is not guaranteed. It is something that you have to plan for and it is something that you have to purpose for. It's the same way in hearing God. You have to purpose to hear and to see God's purpose for your life. You're not just going to accidentally hear about the plan of God. You're going to have to pursue God. When you pursue his, his voice and you pursue His plan, then things begin to be made available to you to where you can see that the plan of God truly has a purpose for your life and that as you purpose to find it out, it'll be revealed to you and it's a good plan. Amen? No matter what you do, no matter what, what kind of uh, challenges that you have, no matter what, what kind of things that you're, you're confronted with, it's worth it when you know that God is in it. And folks, sometimes you just have to use your imagination that you can do it. That's kind of like what I had to do here. I had to kind of imagine, you can ask my wife that when, when I knew that God was dealing with me, I began, watch now, I began to imagine, well, what kind of church building would we have? Now, we ain't even started a church. But I started thinking about buildings and I started looking at church buildings. I got on websites that I could find church buildings and you know what? None of the buildings that I looked at look like what we ended up with today. But folks, what I had to do, I had to get an imagination in my mind of doing what God was saying when he was saying start a church. I had to kind of imagine myself being there. I'll never forget, many years ago I heard Jerry Savelle talking about this uh, particular story. It was back in the early days of his ministry and he was just getting started with Brother Copeland and he would go and help Brother Copeland get set up. And Brother Copeland told him, he said, uh, I can't pay you anything right now. He said, so whatever you get, whatever you, you make in this ministry and, and, and supporting me, you'll have to believe God for. So he doesn't have much at that, you know, in that particular stage in his life. And he said that he would go out on Sunday afternoons after church and him and his wife, Carolyn, would drive around the neighborhoods and look at beautiful homes. Have you ever done that? You ever just go out and look at, at, at beautiful homes and you go, oh man, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. And he said, so he, he's looking at these beautiful homes and he, he verbalized and, and said this out loud. He said, Carolyn, I just can't imagine living in a house like that, in this one particular house that he saw. 
And he said the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, there's no need for you to have to worry about that because you won't. And he said, and when I heard that, it was kind of offensive. And he said, well, why, why not? Why can't I have a house like that? And he said, the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, because you can't imagine it. You have to imagine what your purpose could be. Begin to use your imagination as to when you begin to, to, to inquire and to uh, look and, and ima to, to discover what your purpose is, you have to imagine that God is able, able and capable of using little o you. Somebody that maybe you never imagined, never dreamed could be used in the kingdom of God. You have to get to a place where you do imagine that God could use you. And folks, I have complete confidence when I say I am completely confident and assured that God wants to use every single one of you. There's a purpose, a divine calling. There is something that is very specific that only you can achieve. But it's up to you to discover the purpose that God has for you, the anointing <clears throat> and the call that God has for you. And when you discover that purpose and you say, yes, sir, send me. I'm willing, I'm available, and I'll do what you ask me to do, even if it's hard. You do that and you'll be amazed at the journey that God will join in with you and the things that'll happen again. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter. There's things that God still, to the day that you take your last breath, that God wants to use you in the kingdom of God for. Amen? Well, praise God. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I hope that you, you just walk out of this, this little message tonight just saying this. I want, if I don't know what my purpose is in life, I want to discover my purpose. I, I, if it's a young person, middle-aged, older person, however much time that you might think that you have, I want to discover what I have left. I want to do, uh, to do and fulfill everything that God has for me. Go out of that. Go out of this, uh, this message tonight thinking about that and watch what God can do and how he can use you when you begin to make yourself available to the plan, the calling, and the purpose that he has for you. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for, for being with us this evening. And hey, if you don't have a home church, I want to invite you to come out and be a part of Kingsway Church. We're here every Sunday morning at 1030. We just have a wonderful congregation. We have outstanding worship and praise and uh, just a wonderful worship team and, and wonderful greeters and, and, and people that uh, the nursery and the children's church and all kinds of different things are available. So God bless you. Come out and be with us on Sunday mornings at 1030. We love you. Amen.